I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots, and I'm going to show you how to take beef bones and turn them into delicious, nutritious beef bone broth. I'm using our own homegrown beef bones. These are soup bones. Each package is about two and a half pounds. The soup bones just have meat attached to them, so those will be roasted. I also have a very large bag of beef bones. The bones that have marrow in them, the bone marrow bones, I'm going to roast also because I want to scoop out the marrow for eating. And the other bones I'm going to put into a pot with water and vinegar. Okay, so this is my roasting pan ready to head into the oven. I'm gonna roast these bones. I didn't wind up having as many marrow bones as I thought there might be. There is marrow inside these soup bones here. Um, and there was one other marrow bone, and then I put these other bones in here because they're kind of meaty. So all of the meaty bones get roasted and browned in the oven, whereas the rest of the bones that don't have much meat on them, they are in the pot. I'm gonna cover them with water and add some vinegar and let that vinegar draw the um, gelatin out of the bones while these roast in the oven. Okay, so these meaty bones are going into the oven, it's not quite preheated yet. I have it set to 400 Fahrenheit, but I'm gonna go ahead and slide these in. We'll let them roast for about 45 minutes or until they're browned. So I'm gonna set the timer so I don't forget about them in there. 45 minutes. And then I'm going to cover my other bones with water and add some vinegar. Okay, so I've got my bones in the pot. I'm gonna add one half cup apple cider vinegar, and I'm going to fill it with water. Now I'm just covering the bones with cold water. So the vinegar actually works to draw the gelatin out of the bones. I know I mentioned that I'm using our own homegrown beef bones, but I did want to point out that even if you don't have access to your own homegrown beef bones, you do want to source bones from grass-fed, pastured cows. That is the best option for making your own bone broth. It's gonna be the best nutrition, the best end result, the most flavorful. So make sure to find grass-fed, pastured beef bones. So I'm just going to let this pot sit over here on the stove. After the bones are finished in the oven, I will add those to the pot, we'll add some veggies, and then we'll start it cooking. Okay, these bones and this meat is roasted. It's ready to join the other bones in the pot with water. Sometimes I save the meat. If you roast the meat long enough, these bones that our butcher calls soup bones that have a lot of meat around them, sometimes I will pick that roasted beef off and set it aside and use it for like soups. Not sure if I'm gonna do that today. I might also scoop out some of the marrow from these marrow bones. So let's take this over to the work area and I'll see what I'm gonna keep and what's gonna go into the stock pot. So I'm gonna scoop the marrow out from these bones. We like to spread it on our sourdough bread. It's really tasty. I also have a recipe on the blog for a roasted bone marrow spread where you mix the bone marrow with salt and herbs. I can link to that down below in the description here under the video if you're interested in that recipe. Okay. okay, this is just a tiny amount. I can't get my spoon into those other skinny bone marrow bones. And that's okay because that going into the stock pot will add flavor to the finished broth. In the interest of time today, I decided not to debone this meat, not to separate the meat from the bones. I'm just going to put all of this into the stock pot. It's possible after I've cooked the bone broth, it's possible that I could pick the meat out at that point if I want to, but in the interest of time today. And it will give the broth a really nice flavor to have all that meat on the bones. I'm just adding it all, meat and all. These bones are always a little awkward and unwieldy. 
Okay, I've got them all in there. And now I'm gonna also scrape out the pan, the drippings from the roasting pan. This pan obviously did not just come out of the oven or it would be too hot for me to hold with my bare hands. It's been cooling for a little bit, so that's perfect. Scrape all of those drippings into the pot. Okay, the final step is to add some veggies. I add the same veggies that I do for my chicken broth. I add onions, carrots, and celery. All of it is homegrown. I've got a few small onions here. It's currently the beginning of March and these onions have been in storage. So that is pretty cool that we're still using our own homegrown onions that were harvested last summer. I'm putting, these are pretty small onions, so I'm putting a few of those in. Normally, if I had a good size onion, a bigger one, I would probably only do one onion quartered. Next, I'm adding some celery. What I do, this is my homegrown celery, and we use the stalks, we chop the stalks and freeze them, and then I save the tops in the freezer like this, and we use them all year long for broth. So I'm just gonna put a big hunk of frozen celery leaves in there. Next, I'm gonna add some homegrown carrots. Since these are homegrown carrots, they come in all shapes and sizes. I usually try to put in about the equivalent of one or two good sized long carrots. So I've turned my heat on to high, I'm putting the lid on, I'm going to bring it to a boil. Once it starts boiling, we'll turn it down to low and let it simmer for hours and hours and probably even overnight. And then tomorrow we'll strain this broth and stick it in the fridge or the freezer to use later in soups. So now it's the next day. My broth has been simmering for at least 14, 16 hours. I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm gonna add a small handful of peppercorns and also some parsley from my freezer. This came from my garden. I never really measure these amounts. I just kind of toss some in. I'll put the lid back on and let it kind of steep for at least 30 minutes, maybe longer until I strain the broth. So the last step for making beef bone broth is to strain the broth to get rid of the bones. We like to feed them to our animals. But um, I originally recorded the ending of this process and then realized that I made a mistake. So I wanted to show you and explain my mistake and help prevent you from making the same mistake. Um, what I did was I strained my beef broth directly from the pot into a soup pot. I was making some beef and veggie soup, but this is what happened. The result of the mistake is that I was scooping the oily layer right off the top. I was not paying attention and I was actually honestly in a rush to try to finish the video and to keep my kitchen work going. And I skimmed what was basically the fat from the top of the broth and put that into the soup pot. So you can see, this is my soup, and you can see all of this hard white part. That's all of the fat. It should have been broth, but I skipped the fat out. This is salvageable, don't worry. And it's fine to eat the fat, it just, you want a broth when you're eating soup and not like a really heavy, oily fat. So. That was the mistake that I made. Um, and I wanted to point out a couple of things. I make chicken broth, chicken bone broth all the time. Probably almost once a week. I could probably make it in my sleep. And chicken bones are not nearly as fatty as beef and also lamb and pork. So with chicken broth, I almost never skim the fat off of my broth. I usually, in fact, this is chicken broth I wanted to show you. This is chicken broth, and you can see that white kind of yellowish layer on the top. That is the fat, and it's very minimal, so minimal that it, I usually just blend it right into the stock. If you want, after it has cooled and solidified like this, you can skim it off, 
but that also takes some of the broth with it. And again, I feel like it's not as big of a deal with chicken bone broth. Beef bone broth I make far less frequently because it's more of an ordeal. And um, also it lasts us for a long time because I make a big batch in my big stock pot like I showed you. So I don't make it as often and sometimes by the time that I make it again, I forget some of these little things. So anyway, I just wanted to keep you from making the same mistake and tell you how to avoid that mistake. And another reason why I made the mistake is because what I like to do, what I should have done, is strain all of that beef broth into, I have two of these eight cup Pyrex measuring cups. They're what I like to use for straining my broth because they have a lid so I can put them in the fridge. If I know I'm gonna be using it right away, I can also put it in the fridge to let the fat harden on the top, which is what I should have done. And they're easy to pour from if, if I'm, whether I'm pouring it into a soup pot or whether I'm pouring it into jars to freeze. So these were both occupied when I needed to strain my bone broth. So I was thinking, oh, I'll strain it right into the soup pot. And again, I was going too fast and not thinking through the ramifications of that. So what I should have done is strain the broth into something like this, put it in the fridge to cool. Then when it cools, this is one of my jars of, of beef broth from that batch that I showed you. Um, on the top of this, there would be a thick white, whitish yellow layer of that fat. When it's cold, it's a lot easier to, I sometimes I take like a butter knife or you can use a spoon and you just kind of pry that top layer of fat off the broth and then store, I like to store it in a freezer bag in the freezer because later I can, after I have accumulated enough of that beef fat, I can cook the fat down into, if you cook it down, then you can use it for cooking and such. So what I should have done is strained my broth into a container like this, put it in the fridge to cool, taken the fat off, and then used the broth like that. And then I also wanted to show you that I do freeze my broth in, um, these are recycled peanut butter jars, something with a straight side. I also use wide mouth canning jars, but I prefer to save my canning jars for canning and use jars like this. We've also used salsa jars. Um, you just, when you're freezing liquids, you just want to make sure to leave a good head space at the top. That will prevent the jars from cracking in the freezer. And the other tip for freezing liquids is to make sure the jars are completely cool. Like I strain my broth into the jars. I put all of the jars into the refrigerator. And then after they are totally cool in the refrigerator, then I transfer them to the freezer. That All of that will help to prevent cracking in the freezer. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to tell you is that because I do chicken broth and beef broth, I have my own little system. B1 means this was beef broth from the first batch because I often will use the bones, whether it's chicken or beef, to make a second or even a third batch. And so then that will get a two and a three. So that's my system. That's what I should have done. That's what you should do when it's time to strain your beef broth. And um, I hope that's helpful. Happy broth making.